Hey, hey, segways. I need a paddock cleanser. My last few videos have been brutal. So who better to watch than Zach Bagans himself in the legendary comedy that is Ghost Adventures. I already did a video on Ghost Adventures a few months ago, and I loved every second of editing that video. So in this video, Ghost Adventures visit the haunted Weatherford Hotel in Flagstaff, and it kicks off. It's mental the things they expect us to believe. A big huge giant thank you goes out to all my members and patrons for their support and patience. I put this vote out a little while ago now, but because certain pests were getting in the way, I wasn't able to get the video out as quickly as I normally would. Ghost Adventures were the clear winners and I couldn't have been happier. So thank you. If you wish to get involved in my next vote, please consider becoming a member or a patron. The link is in the description. Just a heads up before we kick things off, much like my last Ghost Adventures video, and the low files, these are TV shows that I'm reacting to. So the copyright BS is really, really strict. If anything looks or sounds a little bit off, that'll be the reason why. I mean, I did all these edits for the low files and it still got copyright claimed. But in all honesty, I don't really care. I just love reacting to these trashy shows. With every step we take in an old town like Flagstaff, Arizona, I can feel those who came before us following close behind. No, you can't. I used to live in London. The amount of people who have lived and died in that ancient city would be staggering. But no sane person today walks around London and goes, I'm feeling those who came before us following close behind. You're too busy worrying about some chavvy twat who really is following close behind. Who is watching us? as we are looking for them. Flagstaff is an old town. The population is around 77,000. The Northern Arizona University, which is located in Flagstaff, has a capacity of over 23,000. So this town has a huge student representation. I can tell you right now, if I was a student in this town and I discovered Ghost Adventures were filming in a local hotel, I would do my absolute best to mess with them. You ever visit an old town? Yes, I have. And you see an old building and just something makes you lock eyes with it. Let's not get too deep here, Zach. It's not like you're staring at the Taj Mahal. And when that building knows that you have some type of ability to connect with that other spirit dimension. When the building knows you have the ability to connect with the spirit dimension. Um... Okay. The sound is deafening. Cut! For the 20th time, Zach, the silence, the silence is deafening. All right, from the top. Henry Rockmark was by all accounts an upstanding citizen, but soon he was ranting and raving at entities only he could see. He was so terrified he drew his gun and fired three shots. What an eccentric performance. Whatever was haunting him then allegedly consumed him to the point that he was full of rage and panic. Sounds to me the guy has some serious mental health issues at a time where this was not understood or even acknowledged. But of course, Zach will subtly allude to this being paranormal. And whatever haunted him is still inside this building with his spirit. Did I just say Zack would subtly allude to Henry's madness being supernatural? Well, I was clearly wrong. Zack doesn't do pointless things like thinking before he speaks. Henry's episode was 100% caused by ghosts. There's no other explanation. Sam Green and Henry Taylor have owned the Weatherford since 1975. Have you ever had anybody like Henry Rockmark who stayed here and was really freaked out by something? Yeah, they've stayed here and they, they haven't wanted to stay. That could be because the hotel does get its fair share of one and two star reviews. That has nothing to do with ghosts. But I don't want to be a dick about this. The hotel does have far more positive than negative reviews. I'm sure it's a lovely place to stay. Weatherford manager Drew Purcell and three other people witnessed unexplained poltergeist activity at one of the hotel bars. 
<laughs> a bottle which was up on a shelf and it was you know pushed back it wasn't hanging off the, the end of the shelf it just spontaneously drops right down and shattered In all honesty, I want this to be paranormal. The problem is, the hotel is so eager to be a haunted attraction since they reached out to Ghost Adventures to promote it as such. A haunted hotel reaching out to a questionable ghost hunting channel for exposure? Hmm, sound familiar? Anyway, is this all happening because the hotel is actually haunted or because there's a gap in the market and paying customers will always want a spook? Did something perfectly natural happen that would have happened sooner or later with the vibrations of general bar use, moving that bottle ever so slightly over a long period of time before it was eventually captured falling on camera? Or was it a ghost? Henry bought the place in the mid-70s. The ads for the place they were advertising, you know, just for like weekly rates. You all right? Got it. Got it. You want me to call 911? Yeah, get some more. Okay. We can call an ambulance. In the middle of Drew's interview, one of my crew members collapses without warning and hits his head on a chair. So one of the cameramen suddenly falls over and they hurt themselves. When the paramedics arrive, they have no explanation of what would have caused the fall. That's according to Zach anyway. We don't actually hear from any paramedics directly. What happened? I was just standing operating camera we're doing an interview downstairs in the basement. And I guess I passed out, fell back, hit a chair. I want to know if Gavin had enough sleep. Did he have a big night the night before? Is he staying hydrated? Zach is great with acting concerned for his team when he's on camera, but it seems to be a very different story when he's off camera. According to Nick Groff, who used to work on Ghost Adventures as an executive producer, he had some eye-opening things to say about Zach and Ghost Adventures in general in a YouTube Q&A video he did, which I would advise everyone goes check out for themselves. This may be controversial, I know, but what was it like working on the GA team after the documentary and fame hit? Just wondering if rumors are true about you know whose ego from experience. I questioned him once about how he treats his team and was blocked instantly. In my opinion, this rumor is true. I witnessed it firsthand and I saw him treat people just as poorly. This host was terrible to work with. It was an extremely hostile environment to work in. And also Dakota can speak on his experience with him too. Nick brings up Dakota at the end here, and yes, that is the same Dakota from Destination Fear and now the YouTube channel Project Fear. There is a whole thing going on there with accusations that Zach had something to do with Destination's cancellation, but I'm not going to get into all that right now. From what I can see, it's mostly rumors, but a lot of people seem to think there is some truth behind these rumors. All said and done, Zach is allegedly not the nicest guy to work with, so I would like to know the kind of working conditions Gavin was faced with with before he had this collapse. I begin with a polterpod session in the area where our crew member was struck down. A what? Polterpod session. What is that? I've never heard of a polterpod session before. I'm guessing it measures electromagnetic readings or some shit. Ghost Adventures don't ever actually explain what the hell it is. What is the name of the spirit that attacked our crew member? Whoa, I got a wit. Oh, you guys. What? This one to like, like, like a seven. Oh, God, no. No, no, not seven. It's right in the corner. It's where... in the corner. That's me in the corner. I just got really, really lightheaded right here. Really dizzy right here. Want to smoke a joint before trying this on? Got to remember that this type of place, there's probably countless spirits. Countless? You just need to find one. Algernon. What the f***? What happened? Just stop recording. The GoPro? Yeah. When I said his name. I'm not Dude, that's that. right! I you said, said his right name! When I said his name. It stopped the GoPro from recording. No, the battery's fine, it's still full bat. I don't think we should say that name again. I swear to God, every single episode of Ghost Adventures, their camera goes on the blink somehow. They must get all of their camera equipment secondhand. Dude, that's weird. What bro. is it? I'm not saying it. Say it. No. Say his name. Say my name. Algonon. 
You're goddamn right. I don't know if I'm being overly sensitive here, because I think this is all nonsense, but if you were to believe that there is an evil spirit here, and you believe saying its name will do you harm, since some of the Ghost Adventures crew may well think that Gavin's fall could have been supernatural, then Zack pressuring one of his crew members to say this evil spirit's name is kind of horrible, isn't it? Can you talk to us? We know that you're here. I can see you breathing. No, 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 you can't, Zack. <sighs> you cannot see a ghost breathing. Why would a ghost even need to breathe? You know what? Never mind. I just got this weird vision of this guy just going... <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's doing what? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. <laughs> For any kids that may have stumbled across this video, this is Zach doing a gorilla impression. Booga booga! <laughs> yeah, a gorilla impression. I get that Zach is supposed to be difficult to work with, but he is entertaining. What? What, Jay? Just got a really bad stomach pain. Just like a stabbing pain just suddenly right here. Maybe they all got food poisoning. I don't know. But at this rate, Zach will be filming this solo. At the same time that I have a disturbing vision of a man breathing heavily, Jay feels intense stomach pains and receives what might be a scratch mark. Whoa, oh, God, it's getting yeah, way it, it more is. red. The cameraman has an earring right next to the red mark on the back of his head. So maybe that's got something to do with it? I don't even see a scratch mark. I just see a red patch of skin. So if I were to crowbar logic into this nonsense, I'd say the cameraman maybe had the camera over his other shoulder and that camera pushed against that earring into the back of his head. Or... It was a ghost. Spikes like crazy. For Are real? you serious? Yeah, that, that an 8.2. Yes. What? Yeah, 9.15. Oh, I think 13, I just saw something on the camera. 13, 12, 14. Whoop de doo. What does it all mean? It's weird. There goes crew member number two. What the f is going on? Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my I can't tell if Zach is going to give a huge bollocking to all of the crew members that are dropping out of this episode, or if he's just happy to use it for content. What is that? That's where you were standing, right? Yeah. Did I do that? I never saw anything on the wall like that. As you can see, there were no marks on the wall before Jay was attacked. He's wearing all black clothes. So whether he's aware he's doing this or not, it's very easy to have black soot on your arm sleeve and then to rub the soot against the walls. Yeah, it looks like burn it marks. felt like I was burning. That's dude. I don't like seeing burn marks on the wall where I was. So can ghosts create burn marks without actually burning anything? Because nobody said they smelt anything burning at any point. I just felt something grab my ass just now. Hmm. Swear to God, it felt like someone like just squeezed my wrist. You lying son of a bitch. It's in that room, I Whoa, told you. Dude. I saw him in there, he was going. I don't think Zach has any idea how funny he is, which makes him even more funny. <laughs> I had a vision of that. Oh, we're going to see more of Zach's visions as the investigation goes on. But first, I've got to share this find. Zach has done an album. Unfortunately, I won't be able to play any of the music, but please go check it out for yourself on Spotify. He collaborates with Praga Khan, who looks like the offspring of Iggy Pop and Bruno. The music from Praga Khan isn't actually that bad if you're into that atmospheric, gothy kind of stuff, but it's the lyrics that make this stand out. Zach doesn't sing. The lyrics are all spoken word taken from clips of ghost adventures during Zach's investigations. So every song kind of reminds me of this classic. I'm a rocket man. Rocket man. Burning out his huge hot Please go check it out for yourself. I would say you won't regret it, but you you probably will regret it. I am pissed off. Oh, oh, scary. Oh, 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 shiver my timbers. Shut up, man. This is getting personal. First, something attacked my crew member. And now my friend. 
Poor Gavin is just referred to as a crew member, but the other fella gets to be Zach's friend. I highly doubt Zach knows the last names of either of these guys. We can't say for 100% that this our crew member collapsed due to a spirit, but I mean... We can't say 100% it was a ghost, but we won't offer any other theories or information that'll come up with a more rational explanation. I don't think that we are fully capable in understanding the magnitude of power that we are dealing with here. Chill, Zach. You're in a hotel. A hotel that would have guests coming and going every day. It's at a whole other level. And if this keeps on and gets stronger, we could be in serious danger. <laughs> I'm in danger! We're out in the main bar area where all the tables are. Watch this. Did you, oh, did you yeah. catch it? Yeah, I saw that moth. You're gonna trip out. I've never seen anything like that. What wow. That? It's, I, I don't know, but yeah, it's- Yeah, it's definitely not any type of flying insect. What are you talking about, Zach? That's exactly what it is. It's a moth. I'm gonna show you one more thing. Can you watch this? What the hell was right that? Oh, that was another moth, fellas. Another moth. It went right to his what? camera and messed with his camera lens. It goes right to the lens, tries to do something, and then continues on. The lens was probably reflecting light, and that would have attracted the moth. Jesus, guys, come on now. This very strange anomaly appears to attack the camera lens. I mean, yeah, literally. it goes right at the camera lens, does something to it, and, and it's like it didn't want to be filmed. Do you actually believe the crap that comes out of your mouth? The fact that Gavin was operating a camera when he was rendered unconscious could be further evidence of something here not wanting to be filmed. The word evidence gets thrown around very loosely by Ghost Adventures. Okay, we are locked down inside of the Hotel Weatherford. If the hotel is willing to go locked down and have no paying guests in for a whole night, so Ghost Adventures can have the whole hotel to themselves to investigate, this makes me ask the question, just how popular is this hotel? And could this be a big reason why the hotel reached out to Ghost Adventures in the first place? Anyway, Zach and Co hear noises from the upstairs, so they all go and check it out. As I was taking pictures with the thermal still camera, I noticed this strange figure or form just to the right of the lamp post. You see the light here. Yeah, I see the, the, the lamp, the floor the, lamp. The floor lamp. Right. To the right of that, right here, do you see that weird shape? Yeah, it looks like it has little skinny legs yeah. on it. Okay, now watch this. This is going to blow you away. Watch that spot. There's nothing there. What? There's nothing there. In all honesty, I like this one. It looks creepy, and I don't think it's Ghost Adventures faking anything. I'm pretty surprised that I actually want Ghost Adventures to have found some real paranormal evidence here. Genuinely, I want this to be a ghost. But I do have to offer just one alternative explanation. <laughs> Later in the video, Ghost Adventures go back into this room and they show us the layout of the room without the thermal camera on. And we can see right next to where this ghostly figure appears are some curtains. Ghost Adventures do not show us if that window behind the curtains is opened or closed. So could this ghostly apparition just be the curtains that are moving? When the bedroom door opens, it may have created a draft in the room. And Ghost Adventures took the photos inside the room very quickly after opening the bedroom door. So could this ghost just be the bottom corner of that curtain that very quickly flicked up with the wind as the bedroom door opened? It's just an alternative explanation anyway. I do wish Ghost Adventures had shown us the room properly and if the window was open or closed, but I do like this one all the same. This presumed figure is also blue on thermal, meaning its temperature is cold. Or the same temperature as, let's say, those curtains. Look, it's the exact same color and temperature as those curtains. 
I do want to be wrong about my explanation. The problem is, Ghost Adventures is about as far from a reliable source as it gets when it comes to getting paranormal evidence. Aaron now tries to make contact with this spirit using the polterpod. Do you want to try turning Whoa! Oh! Dude, it is so cold. My All this energy felt like it came up from my feet out of my head. You just drop in and just smack the lip. Whoa! Drop down, snap, ah. Whoa! That's what exactly where it was, next to that Whoa! Whoa. The f was that? Whoa, whoa, whoa. The f was that? A black shadow just shot over my head! Calm down. Oh my god, man. Bro, I saw this, like, black shadow fly over my head. I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything either. I just, dude, it was, it was like, like, something coming at me. So glad you got all these cameras around to not record the bullshit claims. So next, Ghost Adventures goes back to the room where they caught that ghostly figure that was clearly not a curtain corner. But this time, they bring an SLS camera. For those of you who are not aware, the SLS camera is pretty much the same thing as the Xbox Connect. And misinformed paranormal investigators bring this in the hopes to capture a ghost. The SLS camera has been debunked so many times. You can even go back to the last video I I did on Ghost Adventures where I exposed the SLS camera. Cause Zach uses this camera time and time again. Go in there and shoot that corner. Whoa! What the f Whoa! Did you hear a woman laughing? I just heard like laughing. Like distant, like distant. Yeah. We all hear another female voice, but it isn't captured on our audio. Surprise! Surprise. Okay, look, I'm gonna go to that exact spot. I'm gonna lay down right here. <gasps> Zach, there's a figure standing in the chair right now. Oh my God, there is. I swear to God. It helps maintain the illusion. It's standing in the chair, holding onto the lamp. Thank you. This is absolutely incredible. No. No, it isn't. If you guys understood the equipment you were using, you'd know it's nonsense. As the figure disappears, I immediately go into a very strange trance, and I don't recall the things I start saying. I love Zach. The bloke's a maniac. <sighs> I love you. I love you. Um, okay. Maybe it's time for the rest of the crew to slowly back away from Zack and just leave him be. I love you too. Hail I felt nirvana. I felt ecstasy. I felt an escape from everything. And I felt so great. I felt like I wanted to have sex. Bombastic side eye. You know that's crazy. Sex no, it's not part. crazy. Sex you're... is a part of life. I don't care. No, you're ch not supposed to be funny. No, 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 you're right. Going into a trance and telling a room full of your work colleagues that you want to have sex isn't funny. Well, it's kind of funny. Come on, Zach, it's fucking hilarious. Trust me, mate, you want this to be funny, because if it's not funny, you're just that creepy guy at work. I don't want to explain it right now. I want to enjoy it. There was a... there was a ghost! We are capturing absolutely incredible evidence. I wanted to have sex. <laughs> I wanted to have sex. <laughs> I wanted to have sex. <laughs> Yeah, I'm starting to understand now why all the crew members are faking their sickness just to get away from Zack. We move to the third floor and approach the former room 54. The f was that, bro? Oh, the f was that? Bro, I pushed the door and then it just opened up. Bro, I pushed the door and it just opened up. Welcome to the world of doors. It's amazing you've lived this long not knowing this golden rule of how doors work. Just wait till you discover how to close them. Whoa, I just got an anomaly coming out of the room, Eric. 
bloody hell, the bullshit is coming in thick and fast right now. Watch what happens here. As Aaron gently nudges the door, something then forcefully pulls it open with aggression. I think he kicked the door open. Just before the door jolts back, you can see his left foot doing a weird movement. Of course, I could be wrong, but I'm going to go with a flesh and blood man opening a door that he is right next to over a ghost opening the door. That's my wild and controversial take anyway. Anomalies come from down the hallway. As they reach the door, one splits off, turns 90 degrees, and goes into the room. As the other one comes directly at us. Flies. You're showing us repeat footage and talking about common house flies. I want to see first what happens when one person goes into the basement where we had one of our crew members fall unconscious. Whoever can get this cap closest to that wall is the one that goes. You throw this cap against that wall. So after all the tension Ghost Adventures have built up throughout this whole episode, and we're about to reach the final part of the episode, the guys give an unusually long amount of time to this throwing game to see who goes to the basement. It goes on for so long because Zack just cheats over and over again. I'm not cheating! But eventually, Zack concedes that he lost and goes into the bloody basement. What a waste of time. Clearly, the episode needed some padding. Guys, I just can't go past that point by myself. Call me whatever. And know what happened to our crew member right over there? That's... Whoa, 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 you guys. I just saw something in the darkness back there. It was like a cloud. It had luminance. Guys, get down here right now. Seriously. As entertaining as Ghost Adventures can be, I'm always ready for it to be over by the time we get towards the end of the episode. Allison on. You're in here. Come and stand right here and, and tell us what's going on with your building. As Aaron dangerously calls upon Algernon. I've seen episodes of Bargain Hunt more dangerous than this bollocks. Whoa, whoa! Guys, please, hold I just love the Benny Hill kind of way the guy runs out of the room. This very large screen that was standing upright with the other ones is now on the floor. Two grown men in a small, confined, cluttered space holding equipment knock something over. Fascinating. Best evidence for a ghost so far. Well, I think this is where I have to hop off the desperation train. Ghost adventures will always be funny to watch, but my god, it's just mental. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Cheerio! Cheerio!